Now, the world economy is on the brink of the fourth industrial revolution, the hallmarks of which are rapid and unprecedented techno technological advancements that are seeing machines and software applications replacing humans in the production and distribution of goods and services. With the possibility that technology could turn labor-intensive manufacturing redundant overnight, what are the implications for South Africa and the continent? Joining us now in studio to discuss the challenges and opportunities brought about by the rise of automation is Finn Week editor, Yana Marie. Good to have you with us today, Yana. Hi, Guru. Let's talk about this because it certainly is quite a global theme uh, that was also conducted at the World Economic Forum in Davos uh, earlier this year. But uh, yes. from a South African and African perspective, are we at risk? Yes, I think we definitely are. And, uh, you know, I don't think we're really on the brink anymore. I think we're very much, uh, you know, in the revolution already. And you see it with job losses, um, uh, you know, across sectors where, you know, you, we, last week we had the, the taxi drivers and, and the Uber drivers yes. clashing here in Sandton. And, and that's very much one of the spillover effects of this, um, you know, how technology is dis disrupting traditional sectors. But maybe um, just to look at, at South Africa and the broader continent from a low-skilled or, you know, low-skilled job perspective I think millions of jobs are at risk and if mm. you look at um, you know if you look at a country like Ethiopia where they really are starting to industrialize and starting to build a manufacturing sector and you know one of the success stories is shoe manufacturing you know and, and the reason why they've been successful is because they have low-cost labor but you know what the predictions are is what what happens if if 3d printing takes over shoe production then mm. you know then it becomes a really high capital intensive um, highly technological, te uh, technological sector rather than a low wage, low skill um, type of industry that, and, and of course that, that will cost many jobs exactly. along the way. Exactly. That competitive edge ends up becoming your uh, Achilles tendon. Yes, but exactly. talk about sectors that might be under risk. You mentioned manufacturing. I've heard rumors that maybe journalists like you and I <laughs> might also be under threat uh, fighting with robots. <laughs> exactly. So talk to us about the broader yes, scheme I mean of you, sectors You see, threat. I think, um, you know, there's, I think some of the news wires, for example, they use robotics already where, you know, they've got numbers that gets plugged into a software program and that sure. sends out headlines. So, you know, it certainly is happening already. But I do think the the, the positive side of it is that it also brings many opportunities. Um, you know, and the jobs that we didn't think five years ago, you know, five years ago we didn't know an Uber driver would exist. And mm. now it employs a lot of people in, in very flexible, um, on very flexible conditions. And of course there's downsides to that as well. But for a lot of people it, it brings in much needed income on terms and conditions that they are happy to comply with um, so yes I think it brings it brings a lot of opportunity as well and if you look at you know coming back to low skilled wages I don't or low skilled jobs I don't think robots will take over everything and but it, what it might do is take over the really mundane stuff so actually the jobs that remain might be better and more interesting jobs so so let's hope you know things like renewable energy there's a lot of new sectors and you know jobs that we don't even know is going to we're going to be talking about in 10 years so, so that it does it does bring opportunity as well exactly Yana to close off with though from the South African perspective where we know unemployment is increasing sluggish economic growth if at all this year uh, what are the suggestions that you've been hearing from some of the individuals you speak with as to how we need to prepare ourselves for this industrial revolution I must say I th I'm quite negative about the discussions that we're having in this country about this you know I saw a picture this week of uh, the the first office building in Dubai that was printed on a 3D printer. It's office a building? A office building. Not like a highlighter no. or a pen. A 250 square meter office building, fully functional, where you can go and you can do your work. Um, I mean, and, and then you, you mm. look at the discussions we are having, which is, you know, government and labor mm. or government and, and the private sector that can't, you know, there's no trust, there's no or very limited cooperation. Um, I was at the manufacturing in Daba this morning. You know, they're very concerned in the metal, you know, the metal workers, uh, it's wage negotiation time again. Yeah. You know, the relationships are not strong enough that we, we're not having a discussion about how are we going to face the future? How do we innovate? How do we stay productive? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's more a game of survival and how, you know, how do I get the biggest slice of the pie? So I think we've, we're very far behind the rest of the world in terms of what's, what's happening in other parts on innovation mm -hmm. and how do, you, how do you deal with this likelihood of millions of job losses? Here we're just trying to cling on to the few jobs we still have. So exactly. much of work, you know, much, a lot to do for us. And if we don't catch up, we'll certainly get left behind. Absolutely. Yana, thank thank you. you so, so much for your time. My mind's still trying to process that an office building yep. was 3D printed. <laughs> but anyway, a big thank you once more to the Finwick editor, Yana Marie.